Hey everyone, good morning. It is Friday, September 6th, and we are here to pray morning prayer together once again, right to, right to, whatever, morning prayer to, why well, can't I think of the right word? Anyway, we are um, on page 80 of your Book of Common Prayer, and uh, we're using the new words, not the old English words, you know what I'm saying? Regardless, we're on page 80, and the psalm appointed for the morning is Psalm 31, so uh, what a delight to start the day with you, and thanks for coming, and thanks to those of you who are so faithful to pray and faithful to join us. It is just means more than you know, and also to our silent, non-commenting community out there, and we know you're there, and we even the ones we don't know you're there. It just means a lot, and I hope that this is an encouragement to you. Our little community um, is so happy to post these, um, especially because um, we know that there are lots of folks who don't have people to pray with um, morning prayer. And also, you, of course, you can do this by yourself, but what fun to have someone else to pray with. So thanks for joining us. We're very grateful for your presence with us. So let's pray together, shall we? Oh, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. <clears throat> I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. You have not shut me up in the power of the enemy, you have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly, for my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I'm forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I'm as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Lord, let me not be ashamed for having called upon you. Rather, let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be silenced, which speak against the righteous, haughtily, disdainfully, and with contempt. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have done in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the covert of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his love in the besieged city. Yet I said in my alarm, I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the sound of my entreaty when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you who worship him. The Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full those who act haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A lesson from the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. 
From Perga, they went on to Pisidia and Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our fathers. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country. He endured their conduct for about 40 years in the desert. He overthrew seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought Israel, the Savior Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, who do you think I am? I am not that one. No, but he is coming after me, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Here ends the lesson. Canticle number 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. All right, everyone. It's the beginning of September, which means it's kickoff Sunday and kickoff weeks ahead. So 
this Sunday at church. I know here at Zion, it's teacher training and getting things organized and tons of sign up sheets. So we really need people to be serving. We've got lots of gaps, lots of um, lots of opportunities for you to step in and help us um, help us step in with things like we need Sunday school teachers still for our kids. We need some help with our youngest kids in the uh, early childhood room. There's opportunities to help with coffee hour. We need help at the altar with servers. I mean, there's just tons of opportunities to um, altar guild is a huge one. Chances to build community, get to know the folks at the church and to help the church at the same time. So please take a look at the clipboards this, this Sunday when you're here. Um, and then the following week, the 15th, we kick off with our Sunday school classes, the most amazing class for um, anybody older than sort of late elementary and middle school, inclu including adults. It's going to be the most amazing class. If I weren't directing the choir during the nine o'clock hour, I would so be there. Um, Father Michael Kober is organizing and putting together this class, which is not to be missed. If you are an adult person at Zion, you need to be at this class Sunday mornings at nine o'clock starting on the 15th. There's tons of midweek stuff happening. Women's Bible study starts um, the week of the 15th. Um, an in-person Bible study for men and women starts on Wednesday nights, the week of the 15th, that Father Scott and I are going to lead together. Um, just all kinds of opportunities for worship, formation, community. Uh, don't miss it. Don't miss it. We would love to love to just have you all here. So join us when you can. Bring your friends. And thanks for coming to pray. If you don't have a church home, join us at Zion. We'd love to see you. Happy Friday, everyone, and have a great weekend.